Is career longevity anything that you ever think about? Um, yeah, I think I think everyone thinks of uh, longevity. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I mean, more so with running backs, obviously. Uh, yeah, um, just, I mean, you see now, like, uh, people holding out, such as Melvin uh, Gordon, you see Le'Veon Bell, uh, Zeke's, um, I guess, I think, having some uh, issues with his contract, um, and so, um, everyone's replaceable. Um, you've got you've to be able to separate yourself. Um, you've got to be able to take care of your body. That's, that's what they want. That's what they want to see, and so, um, Todd Gurley secured the bag with that, that <laughs> one, so. Last year you came into the yeah. Coliseum, you guys beat SC. First year for Herm. What did that mean for your program when you, after you came into LA, big exposure recruiting-wise? I think that game, not necessarily that game, I, I felt like the whole season was for Herm. Um, there was a lot of naysayers when he was first hired, blah, blah, blah. They didn't know what was going to go on. And I think as a team, we sort of made it our jobs to make him look good. And we wanted to go out there and win games. And so even with that SC game, when we stepped out on the field, I think you could you could tell there was a difference in the way that we were going to play that game. Um, you could look at the way people were walking and be like, oh, he's got a pep in his step. He, he's going to he's gonna be different. This is a different game. And so um, I think it's huge for his uh, first win um, over SC. And, UCLA as well. Um, both schools in one year. Um, I think that's uh, the first time it's been like that in a, a very long time. And so I was glad we were able to get that for him. You, you, like, you seem like, even though you seem like understated, you know, with the media a lot. It seems like you also have this motivation that you express a little bit on social media, but also just when you're with your teammates alone. Do you have any of that this year, or, or where do you find that kind of stuff? Well, I mean, I, it, it really just it, it comes to me. Um, I feel like. Like I said, social media is full of trollers, um, and that's where people thrive. And so every now and then I throw a jab out and out there, and I, I, I laugh and go about my day. Um, but then there's also people who love to take that stuff too serious. And so, um, I don't know. It just it just happens. I can I can't tell you anything about that. Did you ever get jazzed or like hyped up seeing the motivational videos being made about you or about running backs in general? Motivational, such as just like highlight tapes of you. With, with um, like yeah, rap, so I mean. Like before I go to bed, I, I, I try to watch film. Um, like if you go to my like YouTube channel right now, it'd be like all like college football, 19, 20, like college pump ups and stuff like that. I, I love watching highlights on it. And it, it, it. It's making football season come back faster. Um, and then just being able to see all the great plays that um, great players are making um, throughout these videos is, is one thing that sticks out to me. So you're not gonna set up the Utah game this year? Oh no, no sir, no, no chance, no chance of that. When you watch those highlight videos, old running backs, is there anybody you see a little bit of your, your yourself in, or anybody that you kind of aspire to? Um, at Arizona State, old or just or just any when you're watching highlight tapes of um, running backs. I like I would go watch like a Saquon. Barkley video. Um, I even watched Akram, uh, Akram uh, Wadley from Iowa. I like what he did. Um, I, I watch a lot of different backs and just see what they see. I mean, I even watched DeAndre Swift. I even watched Jonathan Taylor. I watch guys like that um, just to like find moves that I haven't seen before and work on them and add it to my game just to uh, up my level. Do you like the nine game conference schedule in the Pac-12 and facing tougher teams that are on? And are you a little envious of like what happens in the SEC and the Big Ten where they play eight games, but getting some easier team you can have a better chance at getting a few more wins and like those teams getting to play on? I felt like um, I like how it switches every two years because um, that's the same way it was in high school. Um, we had a district, but every two years the district will realign and you have new teams. And so um, I think that's pretty cool. Um, the way um, the Big Ten does it, um, I really have no knowledge on that, so I can't speak on that. Yeah. What can, when people are outside looking in, what can they expect from ASU this season? I think they're going to get a team that's going to finish this year. Um, I, I may have said it uh, not too long ago, but uh, lost a, a handful of games by seven or less points. And so um, I think that's the biggest motivation, just people knowing, or not even people knowing, but us ourselves knowing what we're capable of and how close we are, and it's right there. So um, I think that that's really driving people, and I, I think that's why um, people are very anxious to get this season going. Um, and also we have a lot of seniors that are playing in their last season and they know what's at stake, and so they want to make the most of it. 
you got some tough run defenses on the schedule this year. Any any unit or team individual guys you're looking to go up against? No, not really. Um, I feel like we play Utah, we play Michigan State. They, they've got some really good defenses. Um, teams may load the box, um, but personally, I feel like it's up to them to stop us. Um, we're not going to change anything because of who anyone is. Um, I feel like we should be a, a feared offense. Um, if there's a play going into the A gap and we tell the play, and we tell the, the defense that the play is going here, they got to be able to stop it. It, it, it. It's our will. We got to impose our will on them. And so that's that's the way I'm thinking, and I'm pretty sure that's the way all five of those guys up front are thinking as well. Speaking of uh, not changing anything about the way that you guys do things, Nick Rostin's moved yeah. on. Um, is there going to be situations with a fullback? Is that going to be like a, a wait and see thing? Are there people that are working out that position? Yeah, they are. Yeah, that's all. That's I can surprise. Say. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, guys that used to be here, uh, how much are you still in contact with Demario and, and Kalen Balaj? I know that those relationships are real important to you when you're yeah. a freshman. I think I was talking to Kalen Balaj not too long ago. Um, I want to say like two days ago. I mean, D. Rich was probably last week. Um, we exchanged some words with each other. Um, but even just guys like Nick Ross, and I still talk to him. I was in California with him not too long ago, 4th of July. Um, speak to sleep still. Um, I was sleep Dalton and uh, just people like that. Um, I felt like. Um, I bonded with some great people, built some relationships, and I'll never forget those people. How do you stay diplomatic in a quarterback battle? This is your first one, like, where yeah. you're, you're watching a bunch of guys all try to get the same job. Well, well with me, um, I don't, I'm don't, i not choosing sides. I don't choose sides. Um, I try to be as equal to everyone as possible. Um, or I, I go about it as if I don't even know if it's, notice it's taking place. Um, when I was a freshman, um, I rotated with all types of quarterbacks. Um, I rotated with Dylan, I rotated with Blake, I rotated with um, Brady. So the way I think of it, when a new quarterback rolls in, it could be Dylan, it could be Joey, it could be it could be Jaden. Um, they're just getting reps. Coach wants to see them. So uh, I don't think anything too much of it, other than uh, doing what I'm asking, or what I'm being told. You know, when you're game nights, when the offense is usually sitting together, you should, sometimes you're kind of sitting by yourself a little bit. You know, you're not real well. Is there any certain reason why you kind of sit off by yourself or you want to get, you know, you just I think, pretty low? Um, I think, um, I mean, the running backs have the, like, if they have the end of the bench, that's just the way it goes. Um, but I, I like to, I really like to zone out. I like to be in my own world um, during the game. Um, I like to see things, and I, I, I see things different. I feel like I see things different. And so I'm never the type of guy who's going to yell. Um, I feel like you're just wasting your energy. People don't listen that way. A lot of people on our team don't listen that way. And so, I mean, I mean if there's an issue, um, I'll talk to Coach Christensen. I'll talk to Coach Simon and stuff like that. Uh, but as far as when the game goes on, I feel like uh, – when I'm on the bench, I'm thinking of ways like this is what I see in my head. How can I explain this to Coach Likens to help him understand um, what plays we can call and stuff like that. And also a big picture question. Student athlete welfare is a big issue right now. And it seems like the big the big topic is letting athletes maybe profit off their image, their name or their likeness, whether it's signing autographs, or whatever. There's a lot of issues with that. Where, where would you stand? Um that's like, again one subject that I'm not up to date on, um, so I really can't speak on it. Um, um, but I do feel as if there's it goes both ways. It goes both ways. Um, it goes both ways. I, I see both sides and I see both arguments. But um, it's not at the end of the day. My my opinion isn't going to change anything. So. If they hit you, do you think you wouldn't be in school anyway? So, by the time right, you're so, right. Exactly. So there's that. That was diplomatic. Very diplomatic. <laughs> You know, when that gentleman was asking you about um, longevity, how much do you credit your skill set to avoiding those big hits and, and how you use your spin move and things like that? Yeah, um, I always told myself, like, I'm never going to be a guy that steps out of bounds when I'm running on the sideline. Um, but I, I probably now won't lower my shoulder. I'll just find another way to get around or something like that, depending on the situation. Um, 
goals. Like really, longevity isn't really anything that's in my mind. Um, I feel like my body, I'm one of those guys that I'm never gonna get old as how I feel. And so um, I guess until that, that, that road comes along, I, I really won't know about it. Um, but, uh, but as far as everything, I feel like my body's gonna last uh, a lifetime, longer than a lifetime. So. And obviously, you're, you're, you're your own player, but um, when you look at current NFL running backs, um, who do you closely relate to? Um, I would say Le'Veon Bell. Um, I like his patience before he makes any moves at the line. He's one of those guys that um, I think Coach Simon was teaching me this. Um, you're able to put your body, when taking a handoff, tilt your body, put yourself in a position which to the defense looks like you're doing something. But in reality, your, your, your track is taking you one way when your eyes are looking another and you're able to manipulate the, the linebackers. And so um, I think that's one thing Le'Veon Bell does well. He's able to set up his blocks um, and get people in positions and where he's going to look here and boom, he's back out the back door. But you already moved one step out of your um, uh, position because of the way his body was turned. I mean, his track. So. A lot of people have asked you about longevity, longevity. But can a running back really run with longevity in mind? Don't they just have to be who they are to be successful? Exactly. Um, like I, I always, I always refer back to it. When that becomes all you think of, that's what you become. That's what you think. That's what you focus on, and that's what affects your game at the end of the day. So um, I try not to think about those things. And I just go out there and play. And like I said, God's already written the story. I'm just, I'm just walking the chapters. And like, Uh, I should graduate in December. December. What was your biggest highlight last year for you? I would say it was the U of A game. The U of A game, uh, being down uh, 19 going into the fourth quarter. Uh, we, if you go to the sideline,